Hi, Chad here with Purple Collar Life, and today I'm really excited to talk to you about my new tractor. Now, a little bit of an explanation here. You may hear my voice is a little bit hoarse today. Somehow, I managed all this time to stay away from COVID or not get it for the first two years, and in the last week, I got it. I know everyone's experience is different. Mine has not been as hard as what I've heard other people go through, but it has been shortness of breath, a lot of coughing, and I've just kind of been down and out for about a week. So I've had this tractor for a week, excited to talk to you about it, but very little voice, a lot of coughing, and practically no energy. So this is my first opportunity to get out and tell you about this great find. If you're new to Purple Collar Life, thanks for coming and checking out the video. If you've been with us all along, thanks for coming back. If you're new, you may not know Purple Collar Life is our combination of my primarily white collar day job and our primarily blue collar living style here in Northwest rural Pennsylvania. We use a lot of equipment like tractors, brush hogs, chainsaws, log splitters, all kinds of things that we really enjoy here in the great outdoors of rural Pennsylvania. Now we have a 1948 Ford 8N. It's a great tractor that's been here on the homestead since new. It's been really well taken care of, but it's done its fair share of work here when we had Shetland ponies on the homestead, quarter horses on the homestead, and a lot of you know taking care of property. So that tractor is still here as part of the family homestead, and we will never get rid of that tractor. But I've always wanted to kind of get another older Ford tractor, so, so I've always got my eyes open and notifications set when an old Ford tractor comes up on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. This one came up, I checked it out immediately, and here's what I found out. Now, if you love old Ford tractors as much as I do, you've probably seen a YouTube channel called Dan and Rachel Gingell, and they talk all about these old Ford tractors, how to maintain them, how to keep them running, what you should know about them, the differences between them all. So that's a great channel. If you've never seen it, go ahead and check them out. But this follows one of the things they always say is never trust the color of a tractor because people will paint any tractor any color. So if you're looking at this, you may be thinking, what is that? It's got the hood kind of of a Jubilee, but it's blue like it's a 2000, 3000 series. What's going on with the paint scheme here? Let me tell you what this is and what I think someone did. What this tractor actually is, is a 1957 Workmaster 641. So that's part of the 601 series. The 641 means it's got live hydraulics, a four-speed transmission, and PTO. Now, when this tractor was brand new, it would have been all red. And you can actually still see underneath this paint where it says Ford Workmaster 601 or 641, I'm not sure. But somewhere along the way, throughout this tractor's life. Someone wanted to make it look more like the newer blue tractors. So they painted it the Ford tractor blue. They actually put a label over top of the Ford Workmaster label that says Ford 2000. So at some point, someone wanted this to look more like the new tractors than the Workmaster that it actually is. But we can talk about the Workmaster and some of the reasons I really like this tractor. And you can kind of see the lettering underneath there. This outside sticker says Ford 2000, but underneath it, you can see M-A-S-T-E-R. And coming clear down to this end, I don't know if you'll see it in the sun or not, but here's the Ford logo. And of course, we do have the Ford logos on rear fenders. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between the Ford 2N, 9N, 8N, Jubilee, NAA, the 600, and the 601 Workmaster series. So kind of starting with the older Fords and working way up to this one. So as you know, we have a Ford 8N. Before that, I had a Ford 9N when I first bought this property. That was my first piece of equipment on the property other than a little Cub Cadet 149 tractor. So the Ford 9N, if you're wondering about the size, now this information is all available online and I'll say it varies greatly. Different sources have horsepowers and weights and rear lift limits all skewed or different information but the basics of what I could find, but the early Ford 9N tractors had about 23 horsepower, 12.7 drawbar horsepower, 20 PTO horsepower, weighed roughly 2,500 pounds. Now those weights are all gonna vary depending on whether or not the tires were loaded, etc. When the 8N came out, give you a little bit more horsepower, about 27 engine horsepower, 22 drawbar horsepower, 27 PTO horsepower, 
I'm a little skeptical of that number. I don't know how the PTO horsepower could be the same as the engine horsepower. The eight end weighed about 2,600 pounds, so roughly 100 pounds more, and the rear lift was still 800 pounds. Next up, the Golden Jubilee that looks pretty similar to this tractor. Got a little bump up in horsepower with the Red Tiger engine, so 31 horsepower, 26 drawbar horsepower, 30 PTO horsepower, another 100 pound increase in weight, and 800 pounds of lift capacity in the rear. The 600, very similar to the Jubilee, a couple differences that you would notice. One way to tell them apart is the rear hub assembly. The Jubilee has the same type of rear hub assembly as on the 8N. You'll see a nut in the center of that rear rim on the Jubilee. Now on the 600 series, the center of that rear rim is just a flat surface, no more nut and hub inside there. 600 series still had 31 horsepower, same engine. A little bit of an increase on PTO horsepower. They came up to 31, so again, 31 engine horsepower, 31 PTO horsepower. I'm not exactly sure how that happens. Uh, a little bit of a weight gain, 2,800 pounds. Weight is important too because that helps you tow things, haul things, uh, gives you a little bit more mass on the tractor when you're doing work with it. But a significant increase in the hydraulics with the 600 gave you 1,250 pounds of rear lift capacity. That's a big deal. Then the Ford Workmaster came out, this tractor, the 601 series. And again, this is the 641. This tractor has 48 engine horsepower, so big jump up there, 30 drawbar horsepower, roughly 32 PTO horsepower, 3,200 pounds, and 1,250 pounds of rear lift capacity. Now the next size up from this would be the Power Master. Again, those are a little bit bigger engines, bigger tractors, heavy duty work. But the Workmaster for me is a great size. I love that increased engine horsepower and that increased PTO horsepower. Now, if you watch a Ritter bit we'll do on YouTube, that's a great channel. If you're not watching it, go check John Ritter out. He's got lots of great videos out there, a lot of tractor content. But he's always finding these smoking good deals, flail mowers, aluminum trailers. I found a smoking good deal on this 641 Workmaster. I am the third owner of this tractor it has never been stored outside. So a little bit of history about this tractor. The fellow who sold it to me, his grandfather passed away a couple years ago. This was the grandfather's tractor. The original owner of this tractor bought it in 1957, brand new, kept it clear until 1974. 1974, they took it to auction. And the second owner, who's the grandfather of the person I bought this from, bought this tractor at auction Loved that it had always been stored inside, loved that it was all original um, and had been taken really good care of. They bought it at an auction in Ohio, drove it down the road 11 miles to their house. It sat stored inside, extremely well taken care of and maintained from 1974 until about a week ago when they sold it to me. And I'll tell you that for the tractor, I don't usually like to talk about pricing, but why I think it's a smoking good deal for the tractor, the Woods M5 brush hog and a set of double bottom plows. I paid under $3,000. I won't say how much under, but under $3,000. And we'll talk in future videos about what to look for when you're shopping for a used tractor. But I'll tell you, one of the things right now you gotta look for is good tires. These back tires are amazing, great tread, no big huge cuts or nicks out of them, not dry rotted, brand new front tires, brand new front rims, back rims are in good shape. If you had to buy tires and rims for a tractor like this, you're already looking at over $2,000. So to find a tractor under $3,000 that has great tires and wheels, in addition to being running and running good with attachments, that's a smoking good deal. John Ritter, I'm trying to find those good deals that you always find. I think I found one. Now, like I said, this tractor did come with the Woods M5 brush hog, which is the exact same brush hog we have on our Ford Aden. It's a great, reliable, heavy duty brush hog, and I'm glad this tractor has one. This will keep me from having to drive down the road to pick up dad's 8N, bring it back up the road or through the woods with the brush hog here when I wanna do some brush hogging. It also gives us another tractor that we can use multiple implements at the same time. So when we're brush hogging the big fields, we can have two or three tractors going and get that work done a lot faster. Here you can see those brand new front rims and brand new front tires. And one of the things I love about these front tires is they have the inside wheel weights. Those are two 50 pound cast weights that bolt to the rim. So we've got 
200 pounds of front end ballast weight when you've got that brush hog or other equipment on the back to keep the front end on the ground. So new tires, new rims, all that weight. Really nice heavy duty front bumper. I like these old tra Ford tractors when they have the front bumpers. You can see someone's taking care to put some screen underneath the grate here so that you're not sucking all those bugs and stuff into the radiator. This was a used tractor. You know, they probably pushed some things with it. You don't find many Ford tractors that don't have a couple dings on the hood, but it does have its nice original plate has its nice original six volt lenses. This tractor is still set up as a six volt tractor. So far for me, it started every single time. We'll see how it does in the winter time. You can see though, just 1957, you can tell it's always been stored inside. It's always been taken care of. There's these nice Goodyear rear tires. These are 13 by six by 28s. These tires had originally been loaded with calcium, but the previous owner removed that calcium so it wouldn't eat away the rims. But look at how good those tires are. Does already have the overrunning coupler on the PTO, which we talked about in that Ford 8N brush hogging video. It's got the sway bar links underneath the axle. That one over on that side, you'll see, has a little piece down below it. That's to attach a sickle bar or other equipment that has multiple connection points on that right hand side. It's got the comfort seat on it. Does have this rear work light. Did not work when I first got it. I did just a little temporary wiring here. The wires were all here. They had just been broken. So I now have that working for a rear work light. Like I said, brush hogs in great shape. I believe these are the original fenders for the 641. These ones did have that color fender with the Ford Insignia on it, but the Ford Insignia was not painted when these tractors were new. So that makes me believe that's probably the original. I believe that's the original rear tail light. It needs a new bulb and a new cover. does have a new battery on it this year, purchased in May of 2022. You'll see here I replaced the proof meter cable. I still got the old one laying in here. I need to remove that, but it's bolted onto a bracket that I haven't yet removed. So there'll be an upcoming video about how to replace the proof meter cable. The proof meter was the only gauge on the dash that didn't work when I first got it. Let's go ahead and start this up and you'll see Again, this is another thing to look for when you're looking at a used tractor. This has the gauges and the little red light that all work. So we just put ourselves in neutral here, push our starter button, and these gauges function. See here we've got a fuel gauge, a temp gauge, good oil pressure. You want that to be, you know, 20 to 40 PSI. These tractors with the Red Tiger engine have higher compression, so you'll see higher PSIs than in the old 8Ns. Usually get, you know, 12 to 25 in those 8N tractors. This one's gonna do a little bit more than that because of the higher compression. You can see I had to get that proof meter cable installed, so our proof meter is somewhat working now. More about that in a future video. So one of the differences with the Jubilees and the 600s and the 601 Workmaster series is the hydraulic pump is right here, which is before the transmission. So no longer will I have to have the PTO running in order to lift my draft bar and lift my brush hog or implement behind me. I mentioned that on the Ford 8N video that on those tractors, we'll walk around the side here. On the Ford 8N, 9N, and 2N tractors, you do have to engage your PTO, which spins your, in this case, brush cutter in order to lift that three-point hitch. On this tractor, that's not the case. Let me show you real quick here how I can lift that up with the tractor running, but the PTO not engaged. So if you remember back to the Ford 8N brush hogging video, the PTO would spin, the brush hog would have to run in order for me to lift.
no PTO, live hydraulic lift. There's a couple really nice things about live hydraulics. First of all, when you're brush hogging, you don't always have to have that blade running. So if you get caught over the edge of a stump or a rock, you're not forcing that blade into that obstruction while you're trying to lift and get out of the way. You can lift it up without the PTO spinning. The other thing is when you're doing something like back blading snow in the wintertime or grading your driveway, it's nice not to always have that PTO spinning with the blade back here. It just is one more thing that you worry about moving when you're back here, moving arms and stuff like that. So just another safety feature that the PTO does not have to run when you've got something back here that you're just raising and lowering for use uh, on the ground. Take a quick look here under the hood. What it is is a huge gas tank. My radiator up front. Look at that, original stickers. I love when you find old pieces of equipment with the original stickers. This one has maintenance reminders on it. When to complete that maintenance, it's got the engine oil type recommended, hydraulic system, battery, air cleaner, oil cup, patents. Really cool when you find the original stickers intact. Here's the big gas tank. Here's the fuel level gauge sensor. You can see inside there my new proof meter cable. Another difference between the Workmaster and the Jubilee, if you're familiar with the Jubilee, this left-hand side step was also a toolbox. And water would accumulate in there, the lids would get rusted off, you'd either have a big gap or a really vibrating, noisy lid. On the 641, the Workmaster like we have, they moved that toolbox to back here behind the footrest, and we're happy that ours found, the one that we found, has that toolbox, even came with some old wrenches but that's a much better location and I like the design a little bit better. There are also, if I flip this seat up, parking brake locks now so you can lift this up to engage that parking brake. You can see when I lift this lever up, what's happening down here at the brake is we're engaging that parking brake into the brake pedal. So push the brake down, engage the brake. It holds that in place until you push the brake again. So like I said, I've been fairly sick for about a week now. Haven't had much time to really play on this tractor. I'm looking forward to lots of that. Make sure if you enjoy videos about tractors like this, you give us a thumbs up. Follow us along, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna be doing brush hogging, snow removal. I also have a set of chains for this that came with the tractor. That's another huge thing. Chains are super expensive. So to find a like new set that came with the tractor, another reason this is a smoking good deal. Like I said, the 641, the Workmaster series, was that step up that I wanted a little bit more horsepower. We do a lot of brush hogging with the 8N, and when that grass gets really tall, really wet, really heavy, you have to watch that you don't overwork the 8N. You're asking a lot of it once you get into that thicker stuff. The 641 with a little bit more PTO horsepower and quite a bit more engine horsepower should handle those tasks and kind of preserve the 8N a little bit longer for us. We'd like to keep that tractor forever, so we want to make sure we keep it in good running order.